Use the pathway tool. This is this tool right here. Need be taking zoom in, and you zoom in using control, and then the mouse wheel. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards. See how that works? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Beard. Now, this go around, be looking at something a little bit different. We're actually going to take and, well, I'm going to show you how to take and make some decent, not great maybe, but decent thumbnails. So that way your videos can get some views if you're starting on YouTube. This is what I use because it's free. I use GIMP. So you can go to GIMP.org. Voila. See? GNU image manipulation program. You can download and you want to take and do the direct download. I mean, you can do the BitTorrent, but it's just as simple. It's just as secure taking and doing the direct download from GIMP itself. After you've done that, you've got everything set up. Here's what you want to do. You want to open GIMP. So once you have GIMP open, do you want to take come up here, file new, twelve eighty seven twenty. Now here's another thing: go to advanced options, fill with transparency. So that way you get the alpha channel back here. Now. The other thing I do is I come down here, this panel right here, this has layers, channels, pathways. I come over here, create a new layer. All right. Got a new layer created. Okay, so now I'm gonna take me doing a thumbnail for a video on what I've been doing whenever, you know, that's led me to not take and create so many videos. Because I've only created I've only done like five videos in the last month, so um, it's just kind of an explanation of what I've been up to. I've had life stuff going on, but that's besides the point. But it's what I've been doing other than the life stuff that's kept me from taking and making so many videos. It's on Dungeons and Dragons, so. Actually, I'm just, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take and come over here. I'll, I'll put in the search term. Then I will take and actually go to images. That's a good one. So I'll save. Ooh. Yeah, I'll save image as Dungeons and Dragons alignments. All right. So make sure it's saved in a picture folder. That's exactly where it's saved to, which is where I want it to be at. So what I do is now bring this up, file, open. Pick Jaws. Now I come over here and I scroll down and I find it. Dungeons and Dragons alignments. All right. So I take this tool right here. All right. So after I bring it up, I click this tool, Rectangle Select Tool. Take and select the whole picture like this. Drag, drop. Edit, copy. Now what I'll do is I'll come to this and I'll edit and then paste it in place. So now this this needs a little bit of work. It's not quite tall enough and it's a little bit too wide. So I'll come over here to my scale tool and I'll scale it to where it fits the picture or it fits the space. And actually sometimes I'll manipulate it a little bit more. I'll do that. Drag it out that way a little bit, drag it out that way, and we drag it a little bit further up. Break that part up. Drag that down some now. Reach a little bit more over that way, a little bit less over this way. A 
or I'll just do it like that. Scale it. Anchor my layer. And then I'll create a new layer on top of that. So what I do is, all right, so I'll take an open up pictures. Now I've got another, I've got two different things that I use to actually do videos. One I no longer use other than to take and get still like snapshots of still frames. So I come over here, I find that, I open that up. Now here's what I do. Use a pathway tool. This is this tool right here. Need be taking zoom in and you zoom in using control and then the mouse wheel. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards. See how that works? Now, this is what I'll do to actually get it to where I can put myself on this picture right here and do some snap, you know, snazzy stuff with it. So I'll do this. Got the pathway selected. So what I'll do is I'll actually out just a little bit more and I'll start. I'll just find a spot and I'll start. Now some of these spots are going to be so small that it's people aren't going to be able to actually see how like if you've taken mess you know miss it just a little bit or messed up just a little bit as long as it's not like crazy messed up like you just went in just a little bit too far on one on one of your anchors or something like that it's not really that big of a deal because it's not going to take and show up on the picture on the thumbnail because a lot of times people are most most viewed uh the way YouTube is viewed the most these days is now by uh, cell phone. And even with those large screens, it's going to be hard to take and pick up on something that's, you know, off by like four pixels. So I'll come down here. Make sure. Doing this. And I'll take and actually, once I've got everything to where it's connected, like it's supposed to, I'll right click, I'll hit select from path, and then I hit delete on my uh, keyboard. Make sure I come back up here so that way it deselects the pathway, reselect, and I'll just take and do it again. So this go around, we've got to do it for this right here. And so I just take and start. And for spots like this where you've got curves and everything like that, I'll just take and make sure that I've got the pathways uh, anchors a lot closer. Well, I'm just taking undo add anchor. Go up the finger. Oh. Make sure we don't take and get a whole lot of the white so it doesn't take and bleed through. Same thing with the gray. I said a little bit's not bad, but you get too far into it and it becomes noticeable even on a phone and we don't want that. Small mistakes, allowable. Large mistakes, no. I'll zoom back out, right click, select from path, delete, and now this this process will only take a few minutes, but I'm not going to bore you with the details of that. So I'll come I'll I'll come back once I've got it to where I want it, and I can show you how you can actually cut away the background completely. All right, so now I've got it where I want it, so I can actually remove the background completely. So here's what I do to do that, and anything that you've got doesn't matter if it's a regular picture of yourself that you're going to take and use a juxtapose against. A scene in a game or a scene in a reaction or even a scene in basically with a backdrop of like the ocean or something like that. This is this is how you can do it on GIMP. So after you got your pathway completely done, you want to take and do this. You want to right click, select from path, and then select and invert. So you hit delete. There you go. Background's gone. It's just an alpha channel behind you. So now you want to take and actually select from path once again. So that way you can get all this highlighted. 
you want to take an edit copy now you come over here to your original uh, to the one you're actually want to take and do to make your thumbnail so everything lines up take the paste do this make myself just a little bit bigger all right scale that and then we'll anchor the layer and then what I do is I alpha to selection Come over here to select. I come to grow. I have mine set at 10. I hit OK. Come over here to bucket fill. So I've got my colors white and red. So that's what I mostly use for mine. We we'll use the white on this. And you got the pop that makes it look like you're you've highlighted your out you've highlighted yourself. So now that we've got that out the way, we're actually going to take and start another layer. So we've got one, two, three, four layers right now. So now we want to come over here. I'll actually do this number right here. Alright, so I'll just use the font that I normally use. Make sure you click back on this. How do I want to take and put this? What I do outside of YouTube? No. My other. Take and put this right here. Reference point. Hobby. I don't normally like taking a staggering like that. However, sometimes it can be effective. So what I'll do is I'll actually select the first one. Alpha to selection. Over here, light and shadow. Full opacity. Same thing with this. Alpha to selection. Light and shadow. We'll just repeat it. Now, let's see how this looks. So, I'll take and do 15, 11, 11. Alright, so that looks a little bit better. So, we'll do hobby, out of selection, filters. Make sure we're completely visible. So this is what it now looks like. Then we'll come over here to export. We'll take and do export as D and D. Make sure it goes into pictures. Export. Export. And there we have it. That's how I take and do. That's how I take and do my um, thumbnails to make sure that they at least catch people's eyes. Now this has a lot going on with it. Normally I try not to have so much stuff going on with it, but I, in my opinion, this looks better than just taking a taking something uh, from like a scene that it's not going to take a look quite right or it's not going to take and give you the ability since you're already in it to actually add some of this pop to it so now you might actually wind up seeing a different thing for the actual video a different thumbnail for the video that i, I want uh, once it comes out but this is my process of actually doing my thumbnails it's real you know it takes a little bit of time but it's simple and once you do it two or three times you've got the mechanics of it down it becomes like clockwork. You load up whatever you're going to load up. You take and do it. Five, ten minutes tops. You're done. So that being said, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, notification bell. Y'all be good to each other and love yourselves. Peace.